Hey everyone, it's Craig at Lost River Paracord, and I just want to take a few minutes and go over the Jack's Creek and Selway survival bracelets. Now you're probably wondering, well, what is Selway and what is Jack's Creek? Well, I thought it was fitting to, uh, to put a couple of names on these that have to do with the two wilderness areas in Idaho. One is up in the Panhandle, that's the Selway Bitter, Bitterroot area, and then Jack's Creek is over on the western side of the state. Goes into eastern Oregon as well. It's actually just west of the Snake River, but I figured if you're in a situation where you need uh, the elements to survive, uh, those are two places that you probably need some help. So I'm going to take the next few minutes and just kind of go through the elements of the bracelet, and we'll show you what the completed bracelet looks like and some basic instructions about what to do if you need to use the things that are on it. Alrighty then, let's get started here. First thing on the list is the paracord, obviously. It's a 550 rated parachute cord, and of course the, the 550 cord has seven inner strands, each of which is actually a twisted pair. And those inner strands are rated about 50 pounds a piece. The outer sheath is rated at about 200 pounds, brake strength. And so you've got uh, all in all in a 12 foot length, you've got about 180 feet of cord or cordage that you can use from anything from lashing your lean-to poles together to uh, break each one of those individual lines or in, in internal lines down and you've got a small enough size there where you could floss your teeth. So that's the parachute cord. Next on the list is the buckle and the buckle is a, a nylon side release buckle. It has a couple of key components. Number one on the this side over here is the whistle Obviously the whistle can be used to alert someone to your location or to signal for help. And then integrated into that side of the buckle is the ferrule rod, which obviously is there to, uh, to create spark, uh, to build a fire. Then on the flip side of the buckle, on the other side we have the striker. And the striker also doubles as a knife, a cutting tool, has a serrated knife edge, which is a nice little addition as well in case you need to use that if, in case you ended up wherever you are without your knife. So that's the buckle. Then next down the list we've got the tinder. And the tinder is a couple things. Number one is uh, jute twine. And jute twine makes an excellent bird's nest little tinder ball that will catch a spark very quickly. This little bundle right here is only about three inches of, of uh, twine and the bracelet has braided into it about 15 inches so there's quite a bit of jute twine in there. Then the other part of the tinder is the ranger band and of course a ranger band is like an industrial rubber band it can be used for a lot of different things but in this case it's used primarily as a flame accelerant. Once you get the uh, jute twine started you can throw the ranger band on there and that'll uh, that will increase the flame. Rubber burns very hot and it also burns when it is wet. Then next down the list is the fishing packet. Fishing packet has 30 feet of braided fish line. That's about a 10 pound test. Uh, the braided line is very strong. It's very thin, lightweight, and serves a, a good purpose for the bracelet because you can bundle it up into a nice little bundle and then just unravel it when you need it. Now the fishing packet also has two number six bait hooks. And you might be asking, well, aren't those hooks going to dig into the paracord or dig into your wrist when you wear the bracelet? Well, here's what I've done. I've actually wrapped those two hooks in a small piece of electrical tape. And then that electric, electrical tape is going to go inside the packet where the fish line is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the, the braided line up about three times. Then I'm going to open the end of the uh, Ziploc. I'm going to drop the hooks in there like so and then the other part of this packet is the sinkers. Then the two uh, split shot sinkers go in there like that. Just simply wrap the line up over the top of the sinkers, secure the Ziploc and then wrap the whole thing in electrical tape and that's what the finished product looks like. That's braided into the bracelet. Next thing on the list is the uh, signal mirrors. 
and once again the signal mirrors have on one side a calendared vinyl logo that has either the Selway or the Jack's Creek logos. The flip side obviously is where the signaling comes in. It's a great re reflector and would provide a real decent signal if the sun's out or if you have a way to get some reflection on down the mountain so somebody could where, or find where you are and, and be able to direct whoever's looking for you to where you're at. And then last but not least is the compass. And the compass is a liquid filled compass. Uh, it does have, have a rotating a 360 degree bezel. Uh, it's a clip on type compass and, and again that compass is braided right into the bracelet. All right, so those are the basic elements. We've got fire starter, we've got paracord, we've got a couple of items to signal for help. Get a whistle and you've got the stainless signal mirror. You've got a couple of different tenders, the jute twine and ranger band. And if you're a place where you can fish, you've got the fishing packet, 30 feet of braided line, uh, lead split shot sinkers, and two number six bait hooks. And then you have the liquid filled compass. So here's what the bracelet looks like. And again, uh, some folks wear it right on their wrist. Uh, others, you, you prefer to possibly attach it to their backpack. If you're a mountain biker, you can attach it to the handlebars or somewhere on the bike. But at least you have with you a convenient way to carry the basic elements needed to, uh, to help you get by in, a, in an, a survival or an emergency situation. So to run again through real quick, the jute twine is, is uh, braided into the bracelet and it's what uh, holds the signal mirror on. You see it comes up here, then it goes back underneath again, and then back down into the bracelet and braided through to the other, uh, the other side. Again, about 15 inches of twine. The, uh, the buckles, once again, whistle on this side and ferro rod, uh, striker and cutting tool on this side. And the ranger band is actually pulled right over this side of the buckle, so it's easy to get to if you need that. Then on the inside of the bracelet is where the fishing pack is braided. That packet is hard to get out unless you unravel the bracelet. But likely if you're going to fish using the packet, you're probably going to need the cord as well. And you may have already unraveled the cord. And then the compass, again, is positioned on the bracelet so that you can read the compass. If you happen to wear it on your wrist, you can read the compass while you're, uh, you have the, the uh, bracelet on your wrist and you simply just roll it up. It's going to point to magnetic north and then you can uh, get your basic orientation from there. So that's a quick look at the components in the Selway and Jack's Creek bracelets. And just to kind of wrap up here, there's with each bracelet you get some basic instructions. Talks about the fire starter and that the ferro rod has a black protective coating on it. Uh, it just needs to be removed. You need to scrape that off a little bit till you see shiny metal and then the sparks will come. The fishing packet, the hook sinkers and the braided line are uh, in that Ziploc bag which is braided into the bracelet under the stainless signal mirror. Jute twine tinder. The jute twine can be accessed by pulling on the signal mirror. Pull on one side and then the other and the jute twine will come right out of the paracord. It's very hard to get out but you can tug on it and pull it free and still leave the bracelet intact. The compass, as I had mentioned, if you uh, happen to remove that compass or pull it off the bracelet since it's a clip-on type compass, It'll be hard to get it back on the bracelet and you'll just have to clip it on a pocket or, or a pants pocket or your shirt pocket or something because uh, uh, it's braided into the bracelet and it would be almost impossible to get it back on the bracelet if you happen to take that off. And then on the paracord, the best way to unravel the cord if you need it is on the ferro rod side of the buckle there's two, two ends, two free ends. They kind of get welded together when we singe the ends of the cord. But you just break that little connection free and then pull each one of those ends through this loop and unravel the cord to get access to the cord. So there it is. That's it. If you have any questions or comments uh, or need more information, 
you can go to www.gamedayristgear.com, uh, click on the survival category, and then that will uh, show you the bracelet in its entirety. You can pick your cord colors, a lot of different camouflage colors and, new and neutral colors, khaki, olive drab. Uh, make your cord color selection that way if you choose to. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.